clinical hematologist at uh, the clinical hematology department of Peter McCallum and the Royal Melbourne. Uh, I obviously work in Parkville, but I also have a joint position as a clinician scientist at the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute, also in Parkville. Um, my main focus in my research has been chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL, um, particularly developing novel agents uh, with which to treat CLL. So CLL is the most common leukemia that affects adults in the Western world. So it's a very um, common diagnosis to walk through any haematologist's door. We often think of CLL as an indolent condition, um, and for many patients it is. For many patients, the CLL that they have never causes them adverse problems, and it's something that they live with rather than uh, being a disease that is causing them issues. Many patients never even need treatment and are just followed by their haematologist periodically. For other patients, and it's a minority of patients, but other patients do have disease that progresses and causes them problems. And in those cases, uh, patients need really good treatments that uh, attack the cancer cells while sparing their other cells so that we get good results in terms of the cancer without causing too many toxicities. So in the last decade, and I'm a little bit biased because I was one of the, the team that helped to develop it, but I think venetoclax has been the biggest uh, breakthrough. This is a drug that targets a protein that's overexpressed in cancer cells, but not in normal cells. And what that does is it causes the cancer cells to melt away uh, without causing too much in the way of toxicity. So really none of the traditional chemotherapy side effects. And um, we see that 80% of patients whose disease has relapsed after previous treatment or whose disease is refractory, so it doesn't respond to previous treatment, will actually respond to venetoclax. Um, and many of these patients have had uh, years of good quality life that they wouldn't otherwise have had. Yeah, so obviously the other uh, things that are around in CLL at the moment are the Burton tyrosine kinase inhibitors, most particularly abrutinib, uh, but also more novel monoclonal antibodies. So I think of them as rituximab 2, so newer antibodies against uh, the abnormal B cells. These things are out there, they're in the clinic already. Um, they've really come quite recently over the last five to ten years. I think the next thing on the horizon will be uh, CAR T cells and immunotherapies to treat the um, people who haven't responded to novel agents or traditional chemotherapies. So look, I think it's really important, particularly now with the growth in new treatments for CLL, often patients have a bewildering array of treatment options, all with different pros and cons. And I think patients need to be informed and educated about their disease, about the options, um, and about uh, how they can negotiate the health system to get a good outcome. Uh, it's really important that patients don't feel like we have that kind of patriarchal, your doctor's going to tell you what to do, that they educate themselves and that they're an active participant in the discussion about when to treat, how to treat, what the pros and cons of that will be. And I think without uh, foundations like the Leukaemia Foundation that educate patients that are there for the patient support, many people wouldn't be in a position to do that. So I think it's absolutely critical. I think it depends on the patient. So certainly we know that when you add different agents together, so a novel agent plus a monoclonal antibody or a novel agent plus another novel agent, that we get better outcomes than if we use monotherapy. So we're seeing deeper responses, we're seeing longer lasting responses with combinations. And for some people that is the right road to go down. The problem is that all of these drugs have their own set of issues. And while you get greater responses with combinations, you also get more problems in terms of side effects. And so I think that we need to really individualise and personalise our treatment for CLL. For some people who are young and fit and not at risk of side effects, combination therapy is absolutely the way to go to try and 
eradicate as much of the disease as we can and buy people long periods of time where they don't need treatment. For other patients where the toxicities are a real concern, buying them some good quality time with just single agents is, is going to remain a really attractive option for the future. So I think what we have now is we have a variety of different options and it's about personalising that treatment. Yeah, so I think the most common one, and I, I say it to most of my patients who come into my clinic, you know, they, they sit in the chair and they say, why did this happen to me? And, you know, I, what I say to almost all of them is, it's bad luck. Um, and I think that's something to really, that people need to understand, that there wasn't something that they could have done or not done that would have affected whether this happened or not. It's bad luck. We don't understand, no one understands why this disease develops. We're starting to get insights, but it's not something that people can, by living a healthy life, can um, avoid. It's you know written on your cards of fate, uh, as you like. Um, and I think people should uh, not blame themselves or, or feel that they've done something wrong. It's just bad luck. <laughs>